Hi, welcome to today's dance tip and I'm going to look at balancing. Now it's very important in dancing but I know that many of you have felt as you've got older that your balance is not as good as it used to be. So I thought I might address a couple of key little tips that might help you when it comes to balancing issues in dancing. And the obvious thing really is referring to the arms because often we naturally have our arms out to the side we make that it helps us feel steadier but often in dancing you can't necessarily do that because your arms may be occupied or supposedly in a different position that isn't necessarily going to help your balance so there's three fundamental things that we're going to look at it's turning out your hips the gait and also lifting up tall i'm not necessarily going to cover them in that order but that was just the three that i came to my mind straight away so in actual fact, let's look at the gait first. Now the gait is really your natural stance. We, if we stand with our feet hip width apart, there is a gap there, and that would be your gait, all right? When you walk, you walk with a, a natural gap in your legs. We don't walk like a tightrope with one foot in front of the other, unless you're on a catwalk, <laughs> and we're not doing that. So basically, when you are standing and you have your natural gait, you will find that that is easier because you've got a wider base. If you start walking with one foot in front of the other, you're walking essentially like on a tightrope. That is harder because you've got a narrower base. That's where the arms will naturally want to come out. So that's one thing to be thinking about, that if you're finding that you're struggling with a particular move from a balance point of view, it may be that you need to have your feet further apart fractionally. It doesn't have to be a great deal. So even if we were just doing, let's say, the stretches, and I say put one foot in front of the other, I don't actually literally mean put one foot in front of the other. I just want you to put one foot forward because naturally that would be more comfortable with a slight gap and this would be your natural gait as we do that. So that's the position you want to go for. Wider base will make it more uh, easier to do. If you start doing this, you're going to find it really hard and more challenging. So try and keep that. All right, so that's your first tip about having just a slightly wider base there. Now, about the turning out of the hips, it's based on the same principle of having a wider base. Now, you can see that if I have my feet facing forward, or let's say just, just look at one foot, all right? So one foot facing forward, the width of the foot on the floor is here, and that is the base of my supporting leg. Now, if I turn out my hip, then I have my foot facing a little bit more towards the corner. But what you can see is that now my base, if I'm looking at this dimension, has gone from about here to about there. And that wider base makes it easier to balance. So it's literally, it's mathematical. In, if I put my feet together, so here we go, same concept but just looking at the base there. With my feet together facing forward, that's about the width that they cover. But as soon as I turn my feet out, look what's happened, it's widened the base. And that's what's gonna help you in terms of your balance. So the wider the base underneath you, the more contact you have and spread across the floor will make it easier from a balance point of view. So for instance, when we are doing, let's say a lunge, now you may find if you're lunging forward that maybe you do go forward and across. So we've got the narrower gait, but if you turn out the hip, that will give you the wider base again. So you might find that helps. So that is why that, that wider base across actually makes it easier to keep your balance than if you were doing it forward as well. All right, so we've done two things now. We've looked at the gate, the gap between the legs, that can help you if you just wind and fractionally, but also if you turn out the hips. Now they don't have to be widely turned out, even a little bit is gonna be better. And so generally speaking, if you were doing a step forward and you turn out your hips slightly, that will be easier than if you step forward and have your foot directly facing front. The final thing I've mentioned is about lifting up tall. The natural instinct, of course, when you feel unsteady is to bend and be closer to the ground because you think there's less distance to a fall. But actually, if you have a strong core and lift up through that, all the way through your spine and up through the top of your head, if you lift up and out of the hips, that is 
also going to help you keep your balance. So try and avoid relaxing, bending the knees and sinking into the hips, but actually straightening the legs, lifting up through the hips and through the spine, and you will find that you are better supported. You're, you'll actually automatically hold everything together more, and that will give you strength in your balance. So if I just demonstrate from a side point of view, if I relax the knees, sink into the hips, I'm closer to the ground, but now I lift one leg, it's a little, I can do it, but essentially I feel a little bit wobbly and I have to keep my arms out to help me find my balance. Now, instead of being down in this position, I'm going to straighten. I'm going to lift up through the hips. So instead of down here, lifting up through the hips, through the spine, and now I'm going to lift up. And this supporting leg is very straight. And I have to say, I feel much stronger in that position. Something that you could try at home even. Just feel the difference between relaxed and bent and just like, uh, and then now try and lift up tall and do it. You will find, even though you wobble, you will find yourself stronger. So this is why it's really good to build up strength in your core. And that's lifting up through the hips, through the spine, and out the top of the head. So those are your three little tips to hopefully help you with balance. So if you're in a particular mood that you're trying in dancing, and you find yourself a little bit wobbly or you're feeling a bit uneasy about it, you need to think which of those three things could you adjust to make it easier? And maybe more than one as well. You may find two or all three will help. So it may be a case of instead of being one foot in front of the other, you need to just have a wider gait. You might find that turning out the hip also helps, but also lifting up tall rather than sinking into the ground a bit. I hope you found the tips useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.